Hi, welcome to the Artist Gallery. This is Mr. Johnson, and we're here with a, another episode. Uh, if you are one of my students, please make sure that you have your art images, a writing utensil so you can cut and paste these images into your sketchbook or your art journal, and fill in those notes along with us. Um, I want to talk to you today about uh, one of the most famous artists in the history of the world, and that is Michelangelo. Um, so, uh, Michelangelo Buonarroti was uh, an incredibly famous artist of the High Renaissance. Now, this is the time uh, after the medieval period where art and culture, religion and science, uh, the humanities and math and history and philosophy just boomed and exploded. Uh, he was born on March 6th in 1475, uh, and he died in 1564. So Michelangelo uh, is an Italian Renaissance sculptor, painter, architect, and poet who exerted an unparalleled influence on the development of Western art. He was considered the greatest living artist of his lifetime, and ever since then, he's been considered one of the greatest artists of all time. Uh, Michelangelo did very well for himself while he was alive. Uh, he would have been fairly wealthy when he died because of the, the enormity of the commissions that he received about his artwork. Uh, when he was six years old, Michelangelo's mother died and he went and lived with his nanny and her husband, who was a stonecutter, and here is where he likely gained his love for sculpture. And obviously talented, he was taken under the wing of the ruler uh, of uh, much of uh, Florence, Italy, Lorenzo de' Medici, known as the Magnificent. Uh, Lorenzo de' Medici surrounded himself with poets, artists, and intellectuals, and Michelangelo was one of those. Uh, and we're going to take a look at uh, a lot of the artwork that he's done. Uh, he's known uh, primarily as a sculptor when he began his artistic career, but he became equally uh, as famous for his painting, even though Michelangelo was said to have hated painting, and he considered sculpture really the highest form of art. He is known that saying sculpture uh, is is like, uh, or being a sculptor is like being God, you can create man. He said he, he can see the sculpture inside the stone, he just has to chisel those parts away and let that sculpture free. So I want to play this uh, video for you where we can learn a little bit about his history and some of his artworks, and then I'll show you some of the images right up close. Illustrating History Rumor has it that once in 1515 in Rome, as an Italian sculptor finished the sculpture of Moses, he stroked the statue's knee with a hammer and said, Parla! He was so in awe of the perfection of his own work that to be alive, it only had to speak. This event really describes the personality of this sculptor, who was one of the most important artists of the Renaissance era and of all history, Michelangelo Buonarroti. He was born in Caprese near Florence in 1475 and was the son of a noble Florentine who expected his son to grow up to be a lawyer or politician. But not. Michelangelo was more interested in the arts. So he started as an apprentice at one of the most prestigious studios in Florence, which belonged to Domenico Ghirlandaio. As an apprentice, Michelangelo soon began to exceed his master. At the age of 15, he was called to be a part of Lorenzo di Medici's court of artists. Lorenzo was a great leader in the city and an art enthusiast. There, Michelangelo saw a great collection of antique pieces, which awakened his calling to sculpture and his desire to surpass the great artists from the past. In Rome, at the age of 23, Michelangelo finished the sculpture Pietà, which shows the Virgin Mary holding the dead body of Jesus Christ. Michelangelo changed the proportions to make the piece lighter. He sculpted Mary proportionally bigger than Jesus and made her look younger, even though she was over 50 years old when her son died. According to Michelangelo, that way he could highlight the beauty of Mary's purity. He was so proud and fascinated with his own work that he made it a point to carve the inscription made by Michelangelo Buonarroti of Florence on the sash across the statue's shoulder. Right here. Back in Florence, did not do that. Michelangelo sculpted a giant David from a piece of marble 16 feet high. Because of its beauty and expressiveness, it was placed by the entrance of the city hall so everyone could appreciate it. 
For his stellar reputation, Michelangelo was called by Pope Julius II to go to Rome and paint the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican. Michelangelo isolated himself in the chapel and worked intensely from 1508 to 1512. When it was done, it was so widely admired that Michelangelo, the greatest sculptor in the world, was also acclaimed a genius painter. At the age of 88, Michelangelo was still producing outstanding pieces, including work he conceived as an architect. All of his work is as admirable as the massive dome of St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican, which still stands majestic in the skyline of the eternal city, Rome. I think that's fantastic. Uh, the video is really, really cool. I love the drawings that go along with it. And the fact that at the end, they all form the dome that he designed over the basilica is, I think, uh, genius. So the uh, first artwork that you should include in your art journals is the David. So um, in, uh, I'll, we'll put the info up here and then we'll talk about it. So I uh, began in 1501. Uh, the David was commissioned for the Cathedral of Florence, and for this huge sculpture, it's about 17 feet tall, Michelangelo reused a block of marble that was unfinished uh, from about 40 years earlier. He said, I can take that and carve the sculpture out of it. So the David, uh, if you are not familiar on your uh, Bible history, is a biblical figure, and uh, he was a young child in the Bible story, and he defeats this huge warrior, Goliath. So the David versus Goliath is often used as an underdog story, and the city of Florence at the time in the early 1500s was an underdog city in Italy compared to its larger neighbors, and it wanted to use the figure of David to kind of uh, symbolize the fight that the city had in it. So he said, Michelangelo, uh, we would like you to sculpt us a figure of the David. So he does this incredibly huge sculpture. And there are a couple of particularly fantastic things that he, that he does uh, with this artwork. So he changes the age of David. The David in the Bible story is a young child, but Michelangelo did not sculpt him that way. He sculpts him here as an adult. Uh, also, I mean, bulging muscles. Uh, all of his sculptures show kind of perfect human forms, which is what he's depicting here. In the Bible story, uh, David defeats Goliath by using a slingshot to throw a rock at him. And here, uh, Michelangelo has depicted David holding the slingshot here over his shoulder. Uh, and it does kind of go down his back. Uh, if, if, you know, we were to see the sculpture from behind, you'd see the rest of the slingshot. So he's included that. And this is David as he's looking up to our right, but the figure's left, and seeing Goliath off in the distance. So that's the sculpture that uh, Michelangelo created here. Uh, I think the sculpture is incredible for a few reasons. Um, I was lucky enough uh, last year to be able to go to Italy, and I uh, went to the Accademia Galleria where this is on display. Uh, and saw it for myself, and it's just magnificent. So although this is one of the official images of it, I want to show you some of the photos that I took of this sculpture, um, and we'll talk about it. So one of the first things I noticed when I went there is that it's uh, in its own chapel at this, the very end of this hallway, but as you come around the corner and you go down the hallway, you see it there uh, off in the distance, and you can see its size compared to the, you know, the crowd of people around it. Uh, one of the things I thought was amazing in this hallway is that it included all of these works by uh, Michelangelo that were unfinished. So it shows the block of marble and this giant piece of stone here, and it, you can kind of get an idea for his creative process. Because in order to do work like this, uh, you really can't make a mistake. This is done with a hammer and a chisel. This is before the invention of any kind of power tools or technology that could help the artist do this. So he was doing it by eye and using a hammer and a chisel to kind of break away parts of the stone. And then he would smooth out the stone that was left. And you can see part of that process on these two unfinished sculptures uh, by Michelangelo that kind of lined the walkway leading up to the David. And it's amazing to me because you can't make a mistake, right? If you chisel off too much, the figure has a hole in its leg. And with marble, you can't just put it back on, right? They didn't have super glue or things like that. So if you made a mistake, it was done. You had to start over. So this is an incredibly difficult medium to work in. And Michelangelo gets so much detail and lifelike uh, energy and realism out of his sculptures. But just seeing kind of these works at various stages of completion, but how he's, he's making this figure here, 
come out of the stone and you realize he's going to chisel all of this rock away. And then on the right here, this figure that is a lot more complete, but still not completely finished. He would have a, a bit more to chisel out. So I think just seeing kind of this thought process for an artist is incredible. Uh, but here it is. There is uh, me in front of it uh, during my visit uh, to uh, to Italy. Uh, these are photos that I took in the room. And it's incredible when you go and you look up at it, right? The pedestal that it's on is about six feet tall. So even when you're standing right in front of it, you're still looking up at the sculpture. And Michelangelo knew that this was going to be the case when it was displayed. And he designed it with that way on purpose. So when he designed it, um, the head of the sculpture is actually too large for its body. So when you look at it straight on in some photos, you can see that the head uh, is a little bit disproportioned. But he did that on purpose so that when you're below the sculpture looking up at it, it appears to be the right size. So he took into account how the viewer was going to interact with this artwork, and he made adjustments for it, which I think is uh, just uh, amazing. So um, uh, again, uh, incredible. And uh, he thought sculpting was the highest form of art, and he hated painting. So speaking of that, let's talk about his most famous painting. In 1505, uh, Michelangelo was invited back to Rome by the newly elected Pope Julius II and was commissioned to build the Pope's tomb, which was to include 40 statues and be finished in five years. And although Michelangelo worked on a tomb for almost 40 years, he never actually finished the project. But during that period, while the Pope had him uh, in Rome, he commissioned Michelangelo to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican, which is what we're looking at here. This is an image. I'm actually going to move this out of the way so you can see all of it. Uh, and this is an image uh, from below looking up at the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, which is a part of the Vatican. That's the papal city in Rome where uh, uh, the Pope leads at right, the head of the Catholic Church. And the Sistine Chapel, and that's Sistine with an I, S, not 16. There aren't 16 of them. But the Sistine Chapel is the room where a new pope is elected. So it's an incredibly holy space for the Christian religion. Uh, so in here, all right, we've got it written out right there for you. This took him four years to complete. He basically locked himself inside the chapel and spent four years uh, with very little breaks and with almost no help uh, painting the ceiling. Uh, that you know took uh, entirely four years to do. The composition stretches over 500 square meters and contains over 300 figures on the ceiling. Now, when he was hired to paint this, the Pope asked Michelangelo, he said, hey, come on in, paint the ceiling. Now, the walls of the chapel are already decorated. They have lots of murals on them by other artists. And uh, he asked for the ceiling to include images of the 12 disciples. And Michelangelo said, no. He said, I hate painting. He said, but so if I'm going to do this, so I'm going to paint the ceiling, I'm not painting 12 disciples. He said, I'm going to paint the most elaborate scene that's ever been done. I'm going to blow everyone's minds when I finish this. So that's what he does. So uh, he does this uh, painting that on the right side, the, the kind of the story is in these center sections, and it goes from right to left. There's uh, the God uh, kind of creating the heaven and earth, God separating uh, you know, light from the darkness. Uh, there's God creating Adam, the first man. That's the most famous section of the painting, which we'll look at in a moment. Uh, there's a... Uh, uh, God creating Eve, then expelling Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, and then the last three images are from the story of Noah. And then surrounding that on the ceiling, he's painted uh, saints and prophets and sibyls and angels and all minor figures from the Bible as well. What I think is amazing is that all this architecture in the middle, all this molding, is all completely fake. That's a part of the painting, which I think is just uh, mind-blowing. Now, this is done in a technique anyway, called a fresco. Now, a fresco was the most popular painting technique during the Renaissance, and it was where artists would mix their paint with wet plaster as they applied it onto the surface of a wall. That way, the paint sucks in and becomes a part of the wall instead of sitting on the top. So Michelangelo, in order to reach this ceiling height, he had to build himself a scaffolding. This is like 60 feet off the ground. It's huge. Uh, so he built this giant scaffolding, and the ceiling itself is curved. 
So uh, it's lower at this edge here and this edge, and it curves in the center. So as he's painting the middle sections with the story, he is standing, painting directly over his head. And in the corners, he has to kind of lie down and paint. So as he's doing this, plaster's dripping on him. It, it was a, a miserable experience for him, which I think is kind of hilarious. So this uh, is the creation of Adam, and it's probably the most famous section uh, from the Sistine Chapel ceiling. This is the next piece to include in your sketchbook, the creation of Adam um, <clears throat> as a part of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. So this section, and something to keep in mind, right, all of this architectural detail on the edges, all fake. That's all painted. It's a part of the painting. It, none of it's 3D, which I think is incredible. So here he's depicted uh, God on the right with the flowy beard and the, the nice uh, uh, light, you know, pink uh, tunic. Uh, and he's the first uh, man created, right, in the uh, Genesis story of the Bible. And he is here on this green surface that symbolizes the earth. And their fingers are almost touching. And this is meant to show that in just a second, their fingers will touch and God will give Adam the spark of life and he'll come alive. Now, this is a great example of Michelangelo's art style because every single figure in his artwork, whether it's a painting, a sculpture, or a drawing, whatever it is, every figure is jacked. I mean, they are so muscular. That's just the way that he created every figure. So you've got Adam here on the left. He looks like you know a, a bodybuilder. So does God. God's got huge biceps. And then even these little angels uh, that are in this cloud shape here with God, they've got bulging muscles. That's just what he did uh, with his figures. This includes so much more detail than you can see from the chapel, which I think is amazing. He did not have to do all of this amount of detail in the painting because you really can't see it from the distance. But he wanted to make sure that it was, a, you know, at such a high quality that it you know, could be considered one of the greatest paintings. And in fact, he succeeded, and it, it is uh, to this day. One of the things that scientists look at is this red cloak that is surrounding God and these angels on the right side. And there are two things that uh, scientists say that this cloak looks like. One of them is a brain. So he said if you took a brain and sliced it vertically in half, um, it might look like this, with the brain stem being this green cloth down here. Let me get rid of these for a moment so you can see it. Now, Michelangelo, like his contemporaries, Raphael, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, they would dissect human bodies, you know, dead ones, cadavers, in order to study the bone structure, the organs, the muscular system, and the skeletal system, so they could get all these details correct. So it would not have been far-fetched to say that Michelangelo may have uh, actually looked at an actual brain to make that image. But they also said, if you look at it from the side, that it could look like a human heart, that perhaps this and uh, the cloak up here is like the aorta, that, that vein that goes off the, the top of the, art, of the heart. And then this could be the split right to the left and right ventricles of the heart. So it, it could be that you know God is, is going to give Adam life right, and his brain and heart become active, which is just amazing. Uh, so now I want to show you one other section. This is not one. Uh, is it one you need to include? No, it's not one you need to include in your sketchbook, but I just think it's fantastic. So this is right above it on the ceiling. And here you have uh, Adam. I'm pointing my finger, but you can't see that. Adam, this figure here, and here is Eve, and they're in the Garden of Eden. And this is the serpent that is tempting them. Here the serpent is handing Eve an apple. And uh, this, it's a, a female figure that kind of becomes the snake that wraps around the tree, which is amazing. And then after they eat the apple on the right, the same two figures, Adam and Eve, again, are shown with the angel kicking them out of the Garden of Eden. So I think that's, it's just pretty cool. I love the composition of this. I think it's pretty amazing. Um, and again, look how jacked Eve is, right? Her arms are Jim, I mean, look at these biceps on, on her on the right, even her leg muscles. I mean, you know, she is ripped. Uh, People, when they look at Michelangelo's work, they often note that the male and female figures, other than, you know, the anatomy parts, uh, they pretty much look the same. So, I, you know, other than the, the genitals, they're uh, almost the same bodies, which, you know, is um, not that surprising for Michelangelo. Now, you're not allowed to take pictures inside the Sistine Chapel, so I don't know what this is. We're going to skip to the next one. 
So uh, after he paints the uh, ceiling, many years later, the next pope invites Michelangelo back to uh, the Vatican to paint the wall behind the altar. So you can see the altar down here at the very bottom with some candles and a cross down there. And then the ceiling that's right above this image is the Sistine Chapel that we just looked at. And this is the last judgment that he paints from 1536 to 1541. And this is depicting Jesus, who's in the center. Uh, and he is judging the souls whether they go to heaven or hell. So the painting is read like an upside down U. It begins on the bottom left. So there's this green down here, that's the earth. And there are the souls of the dead that are flying upwards. You can see them here and here, right, flying up into heaven. And then when they reach this central area, Jesus uh, in the center there is deciding whether they go up to heaven, Ooh, they'd fly up here, yay, heaven, or they'd go into hell, which would be back down on the bottom right. So he, again, he's painted hundreds and hundreds of figures into this painting. Now, originally they were all nude, um, and it was for many years later, uh, the, the Vatican thought that they should cover up the nudity. So they hired another artist to come in and paint little floating bits of fabric to cover up most of the nude figures, uh, which is a, a big point of debate between artists whether you know, that's a, a good or a bad thing. Should you take that job? Should you paint over you know, Michelangelo's work? Um, one of the things I want to point out is this section, and I'll, sh I'll go back, I'll show you where it is, but I'll go up in the top, uh, in the center, is this uh, self-portrait of Michelangelo. Now, this was a saint, again, jacked, right, who was uh, flayed. That means that his skin was cut off of his body, which is gross. But there he is, and he's holding his own flayed skin. But Michelangelo paints the flayed skin to look like himself, suggesting that doing this painting was as tortuous as getting your skin sliced off, which I think is, uh, shows what he thought about it. And that's right up here in the center of this. Um, and then another wonderful part about this is all the way down at the very bottom corner, um, there was a, 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 f a figure in the Catholic Church, an advisor to the Pope, who said he was not happy that Michelangelo had depicted so many nude figures. And he complained to Michelangelo. He said, hey, you, know, you can't do that. That's not appropriate for the Sistine Chapel. So Michelangelo took this criticism really well and painted that man um, in hell with serpents wrapped around him, uh, biting his genitals. So uh, kind of <laughs> to say, hey, anyone else have a problem with what I'm doing? So yes, Michelangelo was kind of a jerk, but it's hilarious. Now this, uh, I know it's, it's kind of out of order here. Uh, this is called the uh, uh, Pieta, which means pity or compassion in Italian. It was sculpted in 1498 to 1499. Um, this is done when Michelangelo was a lot younger. Um, whoops, did not, did not mean to skip that far ahead. He was only 23 when he sculpted this. Um, and this is, again, a marble sculpture of Mary holding uh, the dead Jesus on her lap. Uh, like the video said, he changes the size of Mary and makes her larger, but he also makes her younger, which I think is uh, very interesting. And the, look at the incredible detail in the fabric. Right, this is all one piece of stone, and this is carved with a hammer and a chisel. But this looks like folds of heavy drapery. I, I think that is just incredible. Even the little folds around Mary's uh, a collar, here, right, the way the sleeve folds, and then these big ripples of fabric on the ground. It looks incredible. Um, this is located in St. Peter's Basilica, uh, the giant church outside of the Vatican. This is my photo of it when I went there, which I thought was pretty incredible. Um, okay, so we're done talking about uh, our artist this week, so I do have a journal prompt for you. So for Michelangelo, do you think the process of creating is more important than the product? Or do you think the end result is more important regardless of how you get there? So I included the images of his progress uh, up on the screen so you can kind of see, uh, you know, a little bit of what he's thinking while he's creating. And then let me know what you think. Again, there's no right or wrong answer here, but take a little bit of space and write about whether you think the process of creating something is more important than the product or is the end result what's more important. Um, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll have another one next week.